So this time on View from the Top, you'll hear a number of different folks who have different responsibilities in our communities. We hope you've enjoyed these sessions and we hope you'll tune in in the future. Uh, a lot of people are serving us in their communities and uh, give you a little view for what their viewpoint is as they lead our organizations and communities. So thank you, stay tuned. Okay, we're here in the township offices. I had a chance to speak with Corey Bailey. Corey, thanks for spending a few minutes with us today. Thank you. So, Corey, you're involved in the Planning Commission, right? Correct. Um, tell us, if you would, what's the Planning Commission for Oxford Township? What do you folks do? We review site plans. Okay. We review um, new businesses that want to come into Oxford and what they want to do on the property. Right. We review the plans for existing right. buildings that want to expand or grow or make changes uh, to make sure that they're, you know, doing things right and looking out for the best interest of Oxford. Yeah, so there are, if this is right, existing rules and regulations that were established sometime in the past. Correct. And then folks who bring in a new idea for you, mm -hmm. you folks look at what they want, their brilliant, new, wonderful scheme, mm -hmm. and compare that to what works and what's approved and what isn't. Sure. And it's not just the businesses. We also look at uh, building developments, okay. um, some of the new subdivisions and things that want to go right, in right. and uh, look at things like that. That must be interesting work to, behind the scenes, the stuff that people like me drive by a, a year or two later and see it going up and thinking, well, that's, that, that was went up quick. And you're thinking, well, it wasn't as quick as you might think. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of uh, behind the scenes that takes a while to get things going. Right. Uh, before that first shovel gets put in the ground. Well, could you give the folks who are watching an idea, any kind of current projects that you and your planning team are working on today that maybe we'll see arise sometime in the future? Sure. Um, well, we just uh, did the uh, preliminary plans or the original plans uh, for the new development that's going to go off Drainer. Sure. Um, just east of 24. Right. Um, we are looking at, uh, and much further down the road, okay. um, what's going to happen to some of the gravel pits as they yeah. stop mining and what's going to happen with those eventually. Um, down to single buildings like some of the ones up on Oakwood Road that okay. want to expand. Right. So there's lots of, lots to keep you all busy. Sure. When I drive by the gravel pits, we've had the privilege of being at Koenig and also at the Levy properties. They're very gracious letting us come and view them, but they all say the same thing, that eventually they'll be wanting to hand this back to the communities. Those would be beautiful prime real estates eventually. Sure. And some of those, you know, that we're looking at potentially could be in the next four to five to six years. Okay. Other ones... We're looking at 15, 20 years, yeah, potentially. Right. So right. it's, you know, where where is Oxford going to be 50 years from now? What do you see from your viewpoint as far as the, the growth? We hear a lot of folks talk about growth, and we see the, the sewers going up 24, and we notice, I notice that once I get north of Meyer, I'm back in the country. Mm -hmm. um, do you foresee in the future the township, will be growing up 24 or is that likely to be a really slow grow it's uh, it's going to depend on a lot of things um you know do we have the right businesses coming in sure do we have the right housing that's going to attract uh yeah. you know both the uh the the blue collar worker all the way up to owners that are yeah. looking at you know multi-acre parcels sure. um, the big thing is looking at are we doing things right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, nobody wants a development in their backyard, nope. but uh, you know, we want to see Oxford grow, mm -hmm. but still keep some of that small town feel. So that's something that, that we take to heart. How do you do that? It sounds like a, a goal that I appreciate having been here 20 years, but how do you achieve that? Well, we do, like right now, we're working on the master plan, mm -hmm. the plan for, say, the next five years. Yeah. And we've done a lot of community meetings okay. where, unfortunately, not a lot of people actually show up mm -hmm. to voice those concerns. Um, but what we do here is, you know, traffic on 24 at Drainer and mm -hmm. accidents and things like that. Um, we take all that into consideration. We look at, you know, hey, if uh, 100 new houses do go up mm -hmm. at, say, Oakwood and 24, 
which way are they going? Can yeah. we handle that? Yeah. Um, those are all things that, you know, we, we have to take into consideration. Do you have to coordinate? I, I think 24 is a massive road with the state as well to look at traffic patterns and stuff like that? The state does look at that. Oakland County looks at that. Yeah. Um, they do traffic studies uh, to see, you know, if we do a development here, are they better off going down 24 or can we funnel those to, say, Baldwin Road? Got it. Um, but again, that's, it's not just Oxford Township looking at yeah. this. The county has a big influence. The state has a big sure. influence. All right. Well, we speaking as a as a uh, property owner as well as somebody who's got the privilege of working for Oxford TV. We we appreciate living here, and we appreciate the, the the control. I won't say, but the the coordination that it keeps this area really a nice place for to make people feel at home. Sure, and and that's just it. I live here. Yeah. I. I live right over off Drainer in 24. So, you know, again, I want to see Oxford grow. Yep. I want to see it be profitable. But I don't want to see skyscrapers in my backyard either. Right. So, exactly. uh, you know, it's, you know, how do we let it grow and, and attract families okay. without it becoming the next Royal Oak or sure. things yeah. like that? One question for me. I, I love Drainer. I go down there back and forth. But it's dirt, and that's fine for what it is now. But if you, if I'm I'm thinking to myself, if I put a couple of big subdivisions and there's some nice stuff down there, is it going to eventually have to be a paved road just to handle the traffic and keep pretty houses from getting mud-filled garages in the spring? And again, that's that's something that's that's controlled by the the county and even okay, the state. Yeah. I mean, we make recommendations, okay. and you know, we'll put stipulations in with the development. Yeah. Um, but you know what? A lot of people living on the dirt roads want to keep them dirt it's, roads. It's so, okay. You know, we we have to to balance. Listen to all the voices. Yep. Good. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, thank you for the work you do and the volunteer you. work you do. We. Uh, we, I think I'll urge them, the folks who watch, to when you get a notice about the Planning Commission or other groups that are meeting here, uh, show up. Let your voice be known, right? There's always a time for the community to speak yeah. for or against things yeah. right. um, that are or are not on tonight's agenda. Right. So um, we we actually value that feedback. At, uh, you know, we take it to heart. When do you meet? The second and fourth Thursday of the month. Got it. Um, and the I'm on the Zoning Board of Appeals, and that's the uh, second Monday of the month. Got so they might want to show up, huh? We would encourage it. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. We hope that uh, we'll see you next time. Well, Greetings, friends. Uh, Chuck Cameron here from OCTV with Pastor Matt Schuler. Matt, thank you for taking a few minutes to talk with us. Absolutely, Chuck. Right. Glad to be here with you. Yes, sir. The view from the top is designed to help folks in our communities from here out to Leonard understand what's going on from the perspective of the people who have some influence or have some sense of what's going on in our communities. Is, is there anything going on that you would like to know about as far as, or that you'd tell our viewers as far as what's happening in the community, this, this season of the year, um, how this church fits into the, the life of a community? I know that's a, that's a lot of turf, but since you're a pastor, I'm guessing you might be able to pick one of those lines and, and go with it. Anything, any comments on any of that? How's that for a setup? Chuck, you only gave me seven minutes, right? Like how much, how much time you got? We could, we could be here a while, right? Uh, talking you and me and, and our community about what we need uh, here in Oxford, the ways that we need to respond uh, to current events and to each other, uh, I believe, uh, with uh, some, some grace and with some compassion uh, for each other. Uh, what would it look like if everyone in our community uh, started assuming positive intent uh, with the way that uh, we speak with each other, the way we speak about each other, uh, and the ways that we look to work alongside one another for the betterment of each other. Uh, I think that's one of those things as I'm thinking about, uh, you know, the current state of, of our world, the current state of our community, um, that certainly we can have more compassion uh, for what each one of us are going through individually, right? I think if if you go to the grocery store, if you stop in at one of the restaurants, if, if you're at uh, one of our, our establishments downtown shopping, mm -hmm. every single person that you are going to speak with or interact with has something 
something going on in their life. It might be personal, it might be physical, it might be relational or mental or spiritual. Um, and as we interact with those folks, as we interact with our family members and our friends, our classmates and our coworkers, like I think there's a real opportunity for us to have a little bit more uh, compassion and love in those situations. Got it. Now, I, I 200% agree with your assessment and your recommendation. What do we deal? How do we deal with people who maybe don't have a, a religious bent? They don't. They don't consider themselves. I'm not one of those church people. Uh, do they get a pass on this, or is this for everybody? No, I think it's a humanity thing, right? Like it's it's uh, it's something increasingly so as as you look at kind of the shifts in in our world and our nation, uh, maybe away from church centrality to more of a, a secular bent. And and how do we um, how do we respectfully dialogue with each other when we have different religions, when we have different politics, when we have different um, uh, emphases for the way that we have uh, our worldviews, and and how can we do that in a way that lifts each other up? even in the midst of disagreements, I think is something that, that each one of us individually could work on, uh, and then that would only benefit us collectively together. We agree. How would a person go about trying to find ways to be more thoughtful or intentional or just, just kinder when maybe they think people who don't believe like they do are kind of wacky? And should be locked up in a rubber room. Some I'm 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 over exaggerating, yeah. but when sometimes we disagree with people, how do we disagree agreeably? Well, I I think this goes back, and it's it's not a new concept. Uh, G.K. Chester, uh, Chesterton uh, long ago was asked by uh, the the London Times, I want to say uh, one of the popular papers in England, uh, and they asked him, "Hey, G.K., uh, what's wrong with the world?" Um, and he submitted back. He said, "Respectfully." I am, yeah. right? And so if if we want to see the world changed, um, we should um, take a, a, an accounting of what we can actually change. I can't change the way my wife or children um, relate to me. I can't change the way that my coworkers or employees or, or classmates relate to me. I can only change the way that I relate uh, to myself and to them. And so if I'm going to, if I'm going to encourage someone to work on themselves, or if I'm going to encourage a, 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 some sort of a um, movement forward, I've got to be the one willing to, to make that move. I've got to be the one uh, that, that uh, aspires to uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control before I ever expect anything out of the other person. Uh, it's got to start with me. So you're saying that I can't blame them for my bad attitude? I think that's, I think that's the reality, right? And what would it look like if, uh, if it started with me? You know, one of one of my uh, friends and uh, uh, compatriots says, uh, happiness is an inside job, right? And so when we think about the ways that we interact with people, when we think about the ways that uh, we uh, we look at the world, um, I think it starts uh, internally. What what are we reading? Uh, what are we watching? What are we scrolling? Um, who are we relating with? Who are we relating to? Where are we spending our time? Um, and uh, I think in all of those cases, uh, you can you can learn a lot about yourself if you just take a, an assessment of, hey, where is um, my priority? Um, and you can tell based on what fills up your week, uh, what fills up your time, whether it's, uh, you know, you're investing in your kids and your family through sports or athletics or, or learning or teaching, you're, you're putting your kids through college or whatever it is, like you can tell where people um, prioritize things with, with their time and, and with, their, with their resources. Appreciate that. Now, you, are, you have been involved. I've seen you in a number of the events at the Oxford Chamber of Commerce uh, creates and designs how does how does being a part of this church which is a pretty important part of the history of this town how do you see this church connection with other organizations and companies and businesses and the leaders in oxford how do you how do you interact with them and they with you yeah, so I, I think one of the things I, I love about our community uh, is uh, the availability and opportunity to get involved with our community. Yep. It's 
really easy for me as the pastor at Journey Lutheran Church and Early Childhood Center uh, to get connected with our chamber, to get connected with our DDA, uh, to talk with uh, Joe at the village offices, to talk with uh, Jack at the township offices. And I can I can kind of be a connective tissue uh, with all the people um, and be a peacemaker among all the people and and just be an encouraging presence, right? Not Not like that I'm looking for you know, somebody to come knocking on my door and coming into church or anything like that, but to to be a real Christ-like presence among all the people, to say, hey, like, whether you're launching a new uh, business, you're opening a, a new restaurant or a brewery or, or one of the other businesses that we have, like, I want to show up and be there. And when we do the mix and mingles, I want to be present. Uh, and I want to be present at the Coffee Connects. And I want to encourage um, all the folks as they're looking at ways to improve Oxford. Because when we work together, when we act together, we are better together. That's kind of the, the tagline at Journey is, you know, is that we are uh, better together within the church and within our community. Extra credit for a tagline for a community, better together. I like, I mean, it's, we'll, we'll gladly share uh, our tagline from Journey with Oxford if, uh, if that's what's good for the community. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. I certainly appreciate the message. It is one that I expected to hear from a man who, who values what you value. I see some books here that indicate clearly what you value, but I appreciate your time. Um, how long have you been involved in this community? I got called uh, to pastor uh, in Oxford in 2015. Uh, so my family and I have been here ever since. Yeah. Uh, my wife runs a pizza business, Kairos Pizza, that she launched in 2021. And uh, my kids are in the public schools here in Oxford. And uh, we're proud of uh, what our, our uh, family is, is able uh, to do uh, with the support and encouragement of, of our community, our, our teachers, our, our administrators, our staff and faculty, and all the the people that make uh, life happen here in Oxford. Got it. Well, I appreciate your time. I appreciate all the, f the good stuff that you do to help this community. So until next time, Chuck Cameron with Matt, F Matt Schuler saying, we hope you have a good day. Matt, Thanks, thank you. Have right. a good one. Take care. This session of View from the Top finds me in the, one of my favorite places in town, Oxford Library, with the library director, Brian Cloutier. Brian, thank you for taking some time to talk today. You're welcome. My pleasure. It's, a, well, it's my pleasure, too. Um, we've asked Brian to speak a little bit about what the community needs to know about what the library's been up to and what you see as kind of the future and any, any of the other things that you need the community to understand. So what's what's new in the library, Brian? Sure, it's uh, it's been a very busy year for us uh, here at the library. Sure. Um, we are finishing up a uh, light renovation to the building um, following the bond proposal that didn't pass a few years ago. Um, we got a lot of feedback that came from that. And since then, we've also conducted a strategic plan that kind of drives us to where we're headed moving forward. Um, and through that process, we learned that we do need more ad additional space for um, like small meeting, okay. uh, not necessarily large, large community rooms like our community room, um, but something sort of in the middle between our quiet study room and between the, the large community room. Um, so we were able to take a space that was once occupied by what we calling the what we used to call the teen magazine area, mm -hmm. um, and repurpose that space and open it up to the atrium foyer, um, and create a new um, small meeting conference room there. Um, it, it, as it's set up, uh, configured right now, it will have a, a small board table that will host uh, up to six people. Um, we could probably squeeze a few more people in there if we had to, but certainly comfortably at six. Um, things that haven't arrived yet, like the, the TV screen monitor that will be on the wall um, so that we can Bluetooth our computer up to it if we have to do demonstration. 
Um, but it's, I think, going to be very useful for small, small like homeowner association boards, things of that nature that you just need maybe five or six people to get together. Um, but you'd, we don't really need to put you in a, the, one of the large community rooms that hold 40 to 100 and some people. You get sort of swamped in a room like that if you have five people. Exactly. And our quiet study rooms aren't really designed for that. They're really for like one or two people, maybe four people at the max that are studying. Sure. Um, so that's why we decided to to move forward with this project. How would a how would an organization or a group of people that wanted to use and said that sounds like a good thing for us? How would they come about uh, reserving a place and what's the charge? Well, when we went through our strategic planning process a couple of years ago, um, we a, a part of that process was also upgrading our website, the library's website, um, to make it more user-friendly and to give access to a lot of our electronic databases in addition to the ability to empower our patrons to book the community rooms and the quiet study rooms on their own. Um, once the room is ready for public consumption, it will be on our website and as part of our community room schedule for individuals to book um, for, for future use. Um, right now, it's sort of we're in a holding pattern because supply and demand, things are not coming in as quickly as we had hoped. Um, but certainly at a snail's pace, we are meet, re meeting that end goal, um, getting to the point where it will soon be up on our website for people to be able to book. I could go online and reserve that room in the prisons, in the quietness of my office at home. You can do that. Um, it will be in following the same policy as our large community rooms. They'll be available for not-for-profit use. Um, and the, the form will be all online for you to be able to fill out. You can also call us and, and if it's available and you needed it for a group meeting um, kind of on the fly, um, we'll accommodate that right here at the library as well. So. Thank you. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, we uh, reworked the teen area, um, the back of the teen area to open it up a little bit and make the line of sight better um, for safety and security reasons, but also to make it more functional. Um, so that was another component of it. Um, we also reworked some of the off desk staff area that the public doesn't necessarily see, but made the workflow um, much better and more efficient on, on the staff end. Um, the staff area, in fact, most of the staff area of the building um, was, hasn't been updated since the building was built back in 1997. So all of the furnishings, the carpeting, the wall paint, all of that was original. Um, and although it served us very well for a number of years, a lot longer than probably most would like it to be, um, as the library changes and the way that the library function changes, um, then the staff role in that big picture uh, we needed a, a workspace that was more conducive to that and so we also that was included in it um, and this weekend um, so november uh, 8 9 and 10 um, we will be closed to the public so that dte and our um, our um, uh, engineer, electrical engineering company sure. uh, can be here to finalize the installation of the building backup generator. I guess I remember you talking about this in the past. Yeah, so we tend to lose power quite often here, yeah. more than we would like. And when you have a 24,000 plus square foot building with the complexity of the infrastructure that we have, um, it really is, it, it, it's a strain on the building itself and the equipment. Um, so uh, we have been talking about putting in a generator for a long time um, and we were able to borrow from our fund reserve, um, our savings account in order to make that happen. Um, we felt that it was a good investment in the future of the building, especially after we just spent uh, a great deal of money in updating the HVAC, the heating and cooling system in the building. Um, we, we thought that this was a good way to uh, prevent any future damage to that through power loss. But the other component uh, to it is so that we can become part of the township's emergency, emergency management plan okay. um, and be a site for individuals when we have a mass power outage in the community, a site for people to come maybe during the day to, to warm up if it's in the middle of the winter or cool off if it's in the middle of the summer, have access to the technology that they would have if they had power at home. So um, we are very much looking forward to that uh, being completed too. So, and again, all of these projects, the total sum of these projects, uh, we were um, preparing for a future expansion someday, um, having shifted gears after the strategic plan and after the 
um, the failure to pass the bond. Um, we felt it was a good investment in taking a chunk of that money, um, a rather large chunk of that money, uh, and move it into the operating budget to be able to make these um, capital improvement investments happen. And the nice thing about it too is it wasn't like arbitrary. We were very strategic in how we did that um, because there are components like the generator, um, like the heating and cooling system, um, and reworking the main core of the building uh, a little bit um, that were part of that original plan, but pulled out. So I don't know where the future is going, but if we ever do come back to the voters someday, um, it will be a much different picture than we brought to the table originally. Um, and in a lot of those components, whether we decide to do something different in the future or not is irrelevant. Those components are here now um, in, in making the investment in the library. As I'm mentioning that too, um, in reworking the building, we're also preparing for an expansion to the Library of Things collection. Um, the Library of Things collection for people that are like, what is that? Mm -hmm. um, it is basically puzzles or um, metal detectors or basic household tools or educational tools that are very expensive that we may need on a temporary period, um, but not necessarily something that we want to buy ourselves. Um, they will be available here at the public library. So it's your tax dollars working for you. A lending library of stuff? Of stuff. Of, oh. We it's sometimes called random things. Yeah. We, we call it that too. Um, that is uh, in the works. Um, that's part of this project as well. Uh, and we're working on reworking some of the inner part of the building to make space for that collection to grow and expand. So that's why I think if someone hasn't been using the library in a while, um, they really do need to take a moment to step inside the door to see what the library is today um, before fully um, having a preconceived idea of what it is because they may be surprised and I would venture to say they'll probably be pleasantly surprised. As we mentioned the library of today, we also have to think about the library of yesterday. Um, and, and in our case, uh, 2025 marks our 100th anniversary here at the Oxford Public Library. Heard about that. We are celebrating a ju uh, July 25 of 1925 was our birth of the Oxford Public Library. And on July 25th, 2025, we celebrate 100 years. We're going to have a year-long celebration, a lot of different activities. So make sure you're always looking on our website and looking in the library newsletter that comes to your home. Uh, for all of the latest details uh, on that, as well as our social media um, site as well. Uh, but uh, that is a, a very critical component to who we are, where we came from, and where we're moving forward. Um, just an example of that, um, in the 100 years that the Oxford Public Library has existed, I'm only the fifth head librarian that we've had. So I, that, that's, that tells you something about this community, about this library, um, that it's a great place to be, that there's a lot going on, um, that the future of the library is strong. Uh, one of the things that I take pride in is having a very fiscally solid public library, regardless of what the budget is that we are working with. Um, the library uh, has been operating on the same millage since um, the, for about the last 30 years. Um, we've not passed any funding increases in that time period. We've been operating on the same millage roll back year after year, but yet the little bit of economic growth that we've had um, and very strategic, fiscally sound um, budgeting decisions are what have allowed us to be able to do what we're doing and expand um, the way we're expanding uh, it, while doing that with, uh, without an increase to the public. Um, will that pivotal point take us in a different direction someday? Perhaps, I don't know. But right now, we're able to make that happen, and it's something I think the board and the staff and I are very proud to have been able to do and accomplish. As you should be. Well, we appreciate, uh, first of all, your time, but secondly, your enthusiasm. It, it shows that you care enough about this place to lead well and wisely. Uh, as I've said to many, uh, this is a great place for me. I love it here and uh, it's comfortable and it's the people I've gone to for help with computer things or other things in business have been more than gracious and very sharp. So we, I'll encourage you all who are watching 
to consider this library more than just a place you could get a book that you might not actually read. Uh, you might find that there are a lot of services and a lot of friendly faces here that could give you a real much more than a book. So, Brian, I want to thank you for the time. I've got to let you go, but it's a joy to see you again. And uh, you all, come to the library. It's a really good place to be. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Good to talk. Likewise. All right.